Welcome to the Fin Hub Show, the one NFL podcast you can't leave off your roster. Now, here's your hosts, Joe and Kevin DeHale. All right, all right. Good morning, guys, and welcome in. Today marks season one, episode eight now of the Fin Hub Show. Welcome in, guys. Good morning. Kevin, how you doing? Good, good. Good morning. <laughs> yeah, today's been quite a day. Been quite a day, yeah, but it's it's good. It's good, right? Yeah, we got some Miami Dolphins talk to get into. Definitely. And some heat talk. And some beforehand. heat talk. What, so what do you think about uh, DeMar DeRozan? I'm, pr- I'm pretty excited oh, yeah, that some, that can be something, right? Some rumors with DeMar DeRozan joining the heat. I like the idea. I like the idea. We would have Terry Rozier. You see, my issue with this whole thing is I wouldn't. I would like to have DeMar DeRozan, Jimmy Butler playing at the same time, obviously, but I wouldn't want DeMar DeRozan. Uh, DeRose and Jimmy Butler and Tyler Hero at the same time. So, um, well, I think, I think the only way we can get them is if we do a sign and trade. So I, I don't think it's gonna be with. Oh, I thought it would be a clean. No, nah, we can't. We can't afford them right now. So it would have to be a sign and trade. He'd have to sign with the Bulls, and then we'd have to send something back. So maybe even Terry Rozier. I, I think that would actually be the trade because I, I'm not even sure they would want Tyler Hero back in oh, that trade. You wow. know what I'm saying? Even though they are going for like a youth movement, I would rather I would rather keep Terry Rogier over Hero, to be honest. In a weird way, yeah, just because of the money. But, no, um, more than just the money, to be but honest. But I mean, but the thing with Tyler Hero is that he's a good, he's going to be a good trade asset. I, I know it hasn't been in the past, but he's going to be the guy that's going to land us one of these, you know, big names eventually. Can it be so. this offseason? What? Can it be this offseason? Because that would uh, be nice. The only other guy is Trey Young right now. So, you know, obviously Donovan Mitchell already signed on, but well, yeah, whatever. I would, Who I would cares like to have DeMar right? DeRozan on the team. That would be great. Yeah. That would be great. I mean, I think it uh, it addresses... The scoring. The scoring, also more also defense. Also defense, too. So I, I love his game. I love his mid-range game. We would He's have not, the two best mid-range shooters in the NBA, probably, in Jimmy Butler and DeMar DeRozan. You think Jimmy's one of the better mid-range? He has been a good mid-range shooter. I think the best shooter. one right now is Chris Middleton. By far. Oh, okay. Well, right? yeah, I guess Paul George too. He's like even though he's a pure... great shooter. Mm-hmm. But I mean, whatever. whatever well, I'm also excited to see Chris Paul and Wimbanyama play. I think that's a really, really cool, really cool. Last season, I was actually talking about that, saying, "Man, that would be an amazing point guard for Wimby to start his career yeah. out with." A pure, pure point guard, right? That can get him those lobs and all Chris that. Chris Paul's so. probably going to average like 15 assists a game. How could you not just throw it Man, up there? That's that's a guy I would have loved to get over here, but we, yeah. we couldn't afford him. He signed one year, 11 million, something like that. So I know I would, we can't afford that. We and don't the have Celtics the can afford everyone and their mothers, but, yeah, but we can't pick up. They they don't mind going into that, you know, second apron. luxury. Yeah, the luxury tax. So they don't really give. But yeah, Clay Thompson to the uh, Mavericks. Well, think about it. They just want it all. <laughs> it's a lot easier for them to stomach that you know what i'm saying yeah. so but yeah no cool clay thompson of the mavericks i think that that gives him a nice boost he's not the same player he was before but he's yeah. still he's still got it you know still a great three-point shooter that doesn't go away mm-hmm. um but yeah you know maybe enough nba talk we can All get right. into a couple topics here right yeah definitely what are you thinking so i, I really did I, I thought we had a pretty strong draft you know, mm-hmm. this year, a lot of guys that we think are going to be sleepers and uh, that can actually come in and make immediate impact. So I wanted to ask you, who who is your favorite pick and who do you let's just do favorite pick. Forget about the impact. Let's just my who do you favorite. Like the, most? the one that I'm most excited to see is going to be Jalen Wright. OK, he's an explosive guy. And another reason why I really like him is because of his pass protection. Mm hmm. I believe he was the best running back in the draft when it came to that. Best and, and most underrated. Most underrated. Something yeah. Something that he actually did really well. Well, because of his explosiveness, you usually don't see that combination. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, because you, you you think of explosion and you're like, okay, Devon H. And like, yeah. A smaller, smaller guy. Smaller can't really guy. Much, can't yeah. block. But this guy really takes pride in blocking. Yeah. So I, I love that about him. I think that helps us out, especially with our 
offensive line and that being our weakness on offense. That should help him get some playing time right away, right? I, and that's another reason why I'm really excited to see him this season. I think it's, we obviously know that we're going one and two with Devon and Raheem Mostert, and that could be interchangeable. I, we know we have some guys who are saying that by the mid season, we're, we're seeing Devon at one and maybe Jalen Wright at two. Yeah. So, and I think that's going to come mainly because of his pass protection. That's a huge asset to the team, especially when you consider the weak offensive line. But also, he's another guy, like we talked about in the last episode, he's another home run hitter. So it's not really like you're losing much when it comes to Devon, like, I mean, when it comes to uh, Jalen Wright yeah. or replacing him with a guy like Raheem Moster. He's a guy that can still offer the the home run hitting. He can still catch catch out of the backfield. And he's also a guy that can offer that pass protection. He just so happens to be a rookie. He just turned 21, I believe it was a couple months ago. So this guy is, yeah, he's young, but he he still has, he can offer you anything when it comes to a running back. Yeah, what I love about him too is that he doesn't have a lot of tread on his tires. Mm -hmm. I know they didn't use him a lot throughout the years, but I mean, he was highly productive last year. Mm -hmm. um, and getting him where we got him was just such a, a good value pick, you know, in the fourth round. Obviously, we had to give up a third rounder, so essentially he is a third rounder to us, right? Mm -hmm. As far as uh, compensation, but but man, I I love that pickup. I think, uh, like you said, just the pass pro is gonna allow for him to step on the field right away and and possibly make an immediate impact. And I'm not saying that it makes uh, because I love Alec Ingold. Not not saying that it makes him obsolete, but it kind of maybe. It allows you to do different sets that may maybe Ingold was in on just trying to block and pass protect, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? That, you know, he can come in and kind of switch him out on certain certain plays, you know, add another guy out there that can be that home run hitter. So I, I think it's cool. Yeah, that's true too. This, and this guy is such in the that realm of home run hitting that he's been, I and I believe it's according to him, so yeah. grain of salt here, he was clocked at 23.7 miles per hour i don't think that's a lie though it, i mean you it, saw him in, it, in in college he, he mm -hmm. did have that breakaway speed right i had to do some deep digging for this and now looking at this graphic you can see th this is some deep digging here so also wow. take this with a grain of salt i i'm not sure where i found the devon hn at 24 24.42 miles per hour mm -hmm. but yeah, he would be the fastest when it comes to miles per hour. Tyree Kill at 23.34. Mind you, Tyree Kill could probably break that too. These guys have probably gone faster than, than this and not clocked it. It's That's also true too. But even to hit anywhere near where, looking at that, look at, look at Jalen Waddle's number. He looks like the slow guy on the team. Yeah. If Jalen Waddle is the slow guy on your team, then wow. That is, that is, that's something. That's does, telling you something. And it makes me so excited for the future, right? Like, mm -hmm. just as long as we have Mike McDaniel on this, you know, as our coach, bro, we're all, we're always going to go after these fast guys, and that's that's the funnest way to watch football, right? Yeah. It's fast guys and guys that hit you really hard. Now that the NFL is transitioning in a different way, you, you're not going to see hard hits anymore. Everything's a penalty, so yeah, you're just going after it's It's like we're getting ahead of where the NFL is – inevitably Headed. heading right yeah. so that's gonna be fast guys that are just running all over the field right clean so i think we're, we're, we're ahead of the curve there and that there's a reason why we were the number one offense last year so i think yeah. that's one of the biggest reasons yeah i'm i'm really happy with the decision to go into this speed uh speed kind of team here just because for so many seasons so many years watching dolphins football we've been more of that if we're lucky, we have a good team on defense, if we're lucky. Offense was never really a thing for the Dolphins. We tried so hard. The closest, the, my favorite player would be Jarvis Landry, and he wasn't known at all for his speed. Yeah, I love Jarvis, We got man. somehow blessed with Jay Ajayi for a year where he had a couple, a couple games, two or three games maybe, where he had to, over 200 yards rushing, which was awesome to yeah, watch, too. It was against too. the Steelers, the Bills. But even still, yeah. we, we never had a quarterback like Tua that could lead the league in yards. The closest guy we had was Ryan Tannehill, and he wasn't even close to leading the league in yards. Yeah. So now that we have this team where so many different players could be considered strong options for a fantasy football team, 
that was something that oh yeah, yeah. And, and we'll get into that later yeah, yeah, yeah but i just remember going through you know fantasy football leagues and draft and i'm like bro nobody's even picking up dolphins player and the guys that were picking up dolphins players they were complete homers and you're like bro your team sucks that was me <laughs> <laughs> yeah well uh, yeah Devontae you're, parker you're picking jarvis up, landry when i could right yeah so jarvis would probably have been the best option i know we had maybe a season where uh, reggie bush uh, Kenyon drake was you know a guy to to roster man could you imagine actually i know this is a little off topic but reggie bush on this team yeah well reggie bush would be the slow guy on this team yeah but bro he was so shifty he was so quick yeah i i, I actually saw some highlights of him the other day in the dolphins uniform mm -hmm. which i remember those days but man it was just so special right yeah where'd he go after that it was the lions i think the next year or something I don't remember. But he had over a thousand yards. I think we hadn't had like a thousand yard rusher before that in forever. So it was, yeah, it was we, very we've, exciting. We've been blessed recently. And I think that's something that a lot of Dolphins fans get frustrated with. And right, rightfully so. We've been so deprived of any kind of success. But they're also taking it for granted, man. Yeah, don't, don't take this yeah. time for granted. Like the Dolphins have made back-to-back -back playoff uh, appearances. That's something to, to take note of. That's something yeah. to be happy about. And we still have, a, I believe, a better roster than we had last year. So take advantage of this time and be happy with what we're putting together. This isn't the end. This isn't, this isn't the last stop. I think they're going to continue to build. And hopefully this season proves me right and we're, we take another step. We win a playoff game or two. Who knows? Maybe even reach the Super Bowl. But yeah. Definitely loving what the Dolphins have done, adding so much speed and Jalen Wright being another pick. So this is why I'm really excited to see him. I do think he's going to crack the rotation. He's going to find himself with some significant playing time. And like some of our viewers have said, he may even be the number two running back on this team yeah. by the end of the season. Yeah, and that's definitely, you see A-Chan and him, and that's the, it's the rotation of the future. Those right. two are going to be the the one and two for, for us. And they might even be 1A, 1B, right? Right. But I, I think continuing to build like you said it all starts in the draft and i think mike mcdaniel has this thing figured out <laughs> the draft i think he can he sniffs talent that no one else is sniffing out devon achan for us to be able to get him in the third round that's like it's mm -hmm. criminal at this point because and and like we said and we, we said in another uh episode he was willing to take him in the second round it's just greer was like no that's not a good value pick i guess at that point right yeah but he he believed in devon a chance so much he was willing to do it that early and i think seeing what a chan was able to do last year greer might even be like yeah let me listen to mcdaniel maybe if i think he's reaching he sees something in someone you know was like, Jalen wright the same guy that mcdaniel wanted to do that for where he was about to pick him in a round earlier or was that was that one of the washington's uh i think it was malik washington yeah okay okay All i think right. it was malik washington uh and i think they ended up getting mo kamara instead mm -hmm. but damn we still ended up getting him what a round later <laughs> some people have said that jalen wright might be the best running back out of last year's draft and i don't it's, it's possible i don't see where it's too hard like la last season devon i know we still have um bajan robinson to deal with and jameer gibbs but they didn't do anything too impressive last season. Yeah. Devon Achan, I, I, I think he's the one that flashed the most. So he could be the best running back out of last year's draft class. And we could have got we could have done that a second year in a row with Jalen Wright. And here's a clip of Jalen Wright talking about what he's going to be able to provide the Miami Dolphins with this season. I think you're on the winning team right now. So with already right. an offense with so much speed. How does that impact your game? What can you bring to that offense that already has so many home run hitters? I mean, it just you know, just just adding another explosive asset, you know, to the offense. I mean, that just makes the offense, you know, just way better than it already is. I mean, it's gonna be really scary. Um, I got a lot, of, I've got a lot of fire built up in me right now, you know, just from this whole process. You know, I'm just ready to get out there, and, you know, just just prove my point, you know, saying make these people feel that 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 pass on me, make them feel me, you know. So um just ready to bring that aggression to the field, you know, make a lot of plays, make a lot of big plays. And now I got one quick follow up. You caught 22 passes last year. How comfortable are you catching passes out of the backfield? How comfortable are you as a route runner right now? I'm comfortable for sure. Um, we did, we, that's not, we didn't do a lot of like uh, route running and catching ball in Tennessee, but 
I'm definitely comfortable. I'm an athlete. Um, I know I'm in big plays, uh, within, whether it's the passing game or the running game. So, um, you know, I'm just ready to be rolling. I, I think he he probably is the best, I, I, honestly. The only other guy I can think of is, is what, Jonathan Brooks? Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe maybe Blake Corum? I, I don't I don't know. I think I think he's the best though. I don't maybe that's just me being a homer, but the biggest sleeper out of those three, mm-hmm. and I think he on this offense, he's gonna be the one that actually might have the the immediate impact on his team. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm definitely excited to see him out there. I think he's he he's got it, man. He's got all the tools to be successful in this offense too. So Yeah, let's see what he brings. Who do you have as the most excited who are you most excited to see as a rookie this season honestly i'm I'm excited about so many guys right malik mm-hmm. washington jalen Wright, like you said uh those are basically there's only three that i feel like we're gonna get to see a good amount of and it's gonna be malik washington jalen Wright. well actually four sorry mo kamara and chop robinson my number one is chop robinson though okay. i'm i'm extremely you know eager to see what he can do out there he he's got that first step that bend uh he did allude to maybe him maybe having to fix his hands and that was that was his problem with not getting as much production as he should have in college but there's a reason why we took a gamble and took him in the first round right which a lot of teams had him as a first rated uh first round pick so it's not like we reached for him there Mm -hmm. but um what I'm excited about most is just, you know, him being able to step in for guys like Jalen Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb, so, which we don't know exactly what we're going to get out of them or when we're going to see them. So, yeah. I think... And I think what you alluded to right now, there's things that you can fix with Chop Robinson, but there's things you just can't che- teach that he already has. Exactly. So, so the traits, right? The right. the speed, which... That man, explosiveness. He ran like a 4 4 eight Yeah. And a 40. That's... Monster. Bro, that's crazy for a defensive end. You know, an edge. I, I don't know. That's like... Bro, that's literally compared to uh, Michael Parsons. Like, it's, it's literally the same guy, pretty much, down to the same school. So, if he can maybe take on whatever michael parsons did to become this elite edge yeah that would be fantastic now, michael parsons though is a beast in his own right that guy is an absolute machine but they have you know maybe similar similar traits similar traits you know let's see michael parsons is i think michael parsons is faster though he ran a four three six oh. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But Nasty. okay but that's still very close Nasty. right let's see his measurables what what was he height He's six foot three, Chop Robinson six foot three, two forty five, Chop Robinson two fifty four. Wow! So he's got ten pounds on him, and he moves just as fast. So he's another guy though that they were throwing all over the line um, at Penn State as well. So I think, bro, it, it's it's gonna be cool, man. He's gonna be able to play be- behind Clayus Campbell, Bradley Chubb, Jalen Phillips. You also got Shaq Barrett. There's yeah. so many guys in that room that can show him the way. I think it's. I think we're gonna get a lot out of this. And kid, I you think know? this is what makes that Calais Campbell signing. And we we talked about this in the last episode too. But this is what makes that Calais Campbell signing that much better. It's not about, and it it, it obviously has to do with what he can do in the field because we know he's still productive even in this age. But it's about what he can show to the younger guys, the guys that we just brought in, like the Mo Camaro, Chop Robinson. These guys are going to be able to learn so much from Calais Campbell. And it's they're going to be able to start their careers with this veteran presence. And we know how important that is. You have these, and it happens more so, I believe, in the NBA than the, than the NFL. But even the NFL has, has this happen where you have these these freak of nature these guys with so much talent but they go to these franchises that just can't get anything out of them and it just completely derails their career you know and obviously we see this more in the nba happen but to have a mentor to have a franchise that can put you have you start your career in the right direction i think is so important for your confidence and everything going forward if you could just start the right way with someone to bring you up Man, that's that's a huge boost to your yeah. career. So I'm really excited to see Chop Robinson too. Yeah, and it's it it's everywhere on this team, right? Like it, it's gonna fall back to every single rookie as well. I think we have the right coaches in place. I think Mike McDaniel and 
you know, Anthony Weaver are just, you know, ready to put these guys in the right position and, and coach them up. So I'm, I'm excited to see him. And I think all the players as well, like you said, Calais Campbell, yeah, and it's, all our guys. It's also going to be interesting to see what Chop Robinson, uh, if, if Chop Robinson can put together a really, really strong season, mm -hmm. then it definitely is seems like what would be the end for Chubb. So it looks like Bradley Chubb could yeah. be on his way out. If Chop Robinson can really perform, Chubb's going to be a casualty. Well, I think, I think it, it addressed an immediate need in the draft, right? Because we did need a defen defensive end and someone to rush on the edge because uh, Bradley Chubb and Jalen Phillips, obviously with their injuries, and we were completely thin at that position at that time. Um, but I think this is it, it, that, that's why it's a two-parter, right? He's going to come in to add some much-needed relief at the position right now, but... I think it is the the Bradley Chubb replacement. We can't afford to to pay Bradley Chubb anymore after the season, and yeah. I think we can have a clean break, and it's not going to affect our salary cap. So, I, I I agree with that. That's actually a good point. So, I, I'm it it kind of sucks because you know Bradley Chubb's probably going to be the one coaching up his replacement, but you know this is a, this is the nature of the beast, man. This is how the game goes. Here's a clip of uh, Chop Robinson and what he can bring to the Dolphins. Uh, no, of course, you know, I wanted sacks, but I, you know, I control what I can control. Try to affect the quarterback as much as possible. My teammate gets a sack. I'm just as happy for him as if I get the sack. So if I'm not getting there, I know my teammate's getting there. So that's fine with me. And from experiencing all the pressures he had, and he had a ton of them these last couple of years, do you remember specific plays, not to name them, but do you remember if there were a lot of plays where you feel like your pressuring the quarterback led to an incompletion, might not lead to a sack, but led to something positive for the Penn State defense? Yeah, I feel like a lot of times, you know, I got back there and I didn't get to the quarterback. It affected the quarterback, whether it was an interception or a PBU or my other DN getting the sack. So I feel like me just getting back there and doing my job caused a lot of effect on the defense. Do you, do you have, feel not the weight, but the understanding of the impact of being a first round pick and, you know, what that, that legacy might hold? Yeah, I, I don't put no pressure on myself. I just come here to keep my head down, be humble, and just work. Be confident, humble, and work. That's that's my main thing. Don't don't change who I am. Be the player I am. Be the guy I am. Because I won't change who I am for nothing. Another rookie that I'm really excited for. I just hope we don't see him this season. Big dude, Patrick Paul. Patrick Paul, yeah, he's I, a freak though. I'm excited to see Patrick Paul. I just hope he doesn't play this season because. If he does end up playing the season, that means that something bad happened to Teron Armstead and probably Lamb too. So, I just don't see him playing this season just because we have Lamb and Teron Armstead. It, if uh, if Armstead goes down, down, you already know it's Lamb. But I guess if Lamb goes down, then you know that's something really bad is happening, right? Yeah. But I, I just like Chop Robinson in a way that he has certain traits and all that that you can't teach which is that speed and the athletic like uh, athleticism sorry mm -hmm. um patrick paul just has the the length six foot seven bro he has the strength you can't teach the that. athleticism yeah he's a he's a guy that i know butch berry's super excited to get his hands on yeah and butch berry in his own right he's done a great job with the line mm -hmm. considering what we've been able to do with the names the injuries you know because something i know all Dolphins fans and uh, have been going crazy about the line. You know, like, what are we doing with the line? The offensive line, we're not making any moves. Like, it's crazy. We signed OBJ and then everyone, you see them in the comments on and the tweets. Everyone's saying, like, I don't care about OBJ. What about the line? You know, well, we'll it, I get it. Yeah. But Butch Berry has been able to do a really good job with the pieces that he's had. So I'm really excited to see what Butch Berry can do with Patrick Paul this Six foot seven, three hundred thirty pound machine. I know he's very raw, but also having that, just like we talked about with Chop Robinson having Calais Campbell, he's also he also has Teron Armstead at his side, and Teron Armstead. So this is an Armstead quote on what he's going to be able to provide Patrick Paul. Every tool that exists for him to be successful and successful for a long time is what I'm going to give him and everybody else in that room. So Teron Armstead, I believe, realizes this may be his last season. Yeah. And which he hasn't committed to it being his last season yet, but but he also wants to pass on, aside from hopefully staying healthy this season and being able to help Miami reach a deep playoff run, hopefully the Super Bowl. He is also taking this as all right, let me spread the knowledge. Let me 
give everyone else my experience and yeah and don't you get a sense of all these older you know vets that we have that they all really care about the team Mm -hmm. like it's 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 a real thing with the culture like they all actually want the team to sustain this level of success even after they're gone right because you know a lot of players can be just set on like okay i want to be the difference maker so once i leave if they don't if they don't do anything i'm okay but i feel like teron really wants to to make his you know make a staple here and be like that guy to be able to show people you also see in Ty- tyree kill recently um mm-hmm. was basically saying all he cares about is winning a super bowl with the with the dolphins right i guess his logic too is like if i win a super bowl i get paid as well so maybe that's part of it but i yeah. think he actually really cares and he wants to win with us so i, I think, think it's cool so yeah going to going back to what you said about tyreek it's important that he wins a Super Bowl with Miami for his legacy. Yeah, it makes sense. He won a Super Bowl with Kansas City, but now coming to Miami, yeah, he's had success as an individual player. But they've won without him as But they've well. won without him twice. Yeah. So it's kind of like that diminishes, in a sense, his, his legacy in yeah. Kansas City. So now if he can do that in Miami, it adds again to his legacy solidifying him as one of the all-time great receivers. Yeah. And hopefully we can make that happen for him. Yeah, and it's also about, you know, showing the world, that, hey, this was the right move for me because I was able to get my money. I'm one of the best receivers in the NFL now, and I was still able to win without the Kansas City Chiefs, right? So it's not just about, you know, him coming out, which I've seen a lot of people say, oh, all Tyree cares about is the money. I don't believe that's true. I, th- I think it's the money is a huge factor. I think that's why most of these guys are in it, right? But he does know that he's knocking on this the door for like this level of greatness that a lot of players cannot achieve, right? So now he's playing for legacy. I think he's playing for his Hall of Fame career, right? Which he's already, I think he's already set that in stone. Mm-hmm. And then what <clears> comes <throat> after that? So like imagine being a three-time Super Bowl champ or whatever the, the case may be. But he gets to do it with the second and only team after yeah. the Kansas City Chiefs. So, yeah, I, I, I think it's easy to pe- for people to say <laughs> behind a keyboard or, you know, when you're offered <clears throat> or when you're one of the best yeah. at your craft, like Tyreek Hill is, and you see all these other people making this kind of money, you it's want only it. natural. Like that's that's what it, it it is. That's what the sport is about. Like they're making that kind of money. And they also start to feel disrespected, right? Why, it's like, why aren't you giving me the same sh- money that, you know? Yeah, why shouldn't Tyreek Hill get that kind of money? He should get that money. He deserves it. We said and he's going to end times. up getting it. He's he going to end up getting it. He's okay, gonna... so wait, really fast. Do you predict that we get a deal done with him and he stays another few years? Or do you think this is going to be like a, a divorce eventually? I would like to think that the Miami Dolphins get a deal done for him. Yeah. Just because... Is that your optimism or is that like... That's my what optimism, and, and, and it's how I feel because, to me, I feel like what he's done for Miami is more than just the stats that he's given us. Yeah. You know, the the touchdowns, the receiving yards, the close to, you know, breaking records, it's which what he's, he's done broken for franchise Tua. records now. It's what he's done for Tua, but it's also what he's done for the franchise as yeah. a whole. He's really shocked this into a different kind of beast, where now fans are are expecting the Dolphins to make a deep run in the playoffs. We're expecting this now. Yeah. Like this year, we are expecting to win a game or two in the playoffs. And he helped create that, right? He's been a yeah. huge part of that. Yeah. Him, McDaniel, even Tua, they've been together, they've created this expectation for Miami. And Tyreek Hill, I I believe, has played the biggest part in that change. Bigger than Mike McDaniel. Bigger than Mike McDaniel. Okay. Well, maybe Mike McDaniel's allowed that to flourish. Do you think maybe Mike McDaniel... Tyreek Hill is the face. Yeah. But do you think Mike McDaniel unlocked this different level in Tyreek? Or do you think Tyreek... Tyreek's always had it. Obviously, you can't... I think it's a combination. Yeah. I think it's a combination of so many different factors. You have Mike McDaniel and his system. You have Tua Tungvaluwa getting the ball out. You know, the way that he does to Tyreek. And then Tyreek's work ethic and continuing to improve in every single way that he can, I think, is something that needs to be spoken about. But also, Tyreek Hill coming from Kansas City, realizing, you know, in order for me to cement myself as one of these all-time greats, 
I have to, I have to put it out there too. I have and to I continue think, going. I think what you're saying, what what's cool about that too is Mike McDaniel, um, unlocks this different level in certain players. Right? He did it for Debo Samuel. I feel like he did it for um, also George Kittle. George Kittle, right? But then he gets here. He does it with Tyree Kill. He unlocked a different type of Tyree Kill, which is an undeniable top three wide receiver in the NFL. You Before, might be onto something. So, because he also then, did it with Raheem Mostert. Raheem Mostert having his career year. But then also, when Odell Beckham came for his visit, this is a big reason why we got him for three million dollars, right? And incentives are another thing. Whatever, we don't even have to get into that. But he sat down with Mike McDaniel. He's like, "Hey, look, this is how we're gonna do this." This, this is what I see that how we can get you back to playing at the level that you used to play. So it's never going to be hard for us to bring in talent on this team, right? I think, in fact, that's why we're getting people for so cheap. And it starts on offense. I, I feel like Mike McDaniel really is this wizard. He's this guy that's like, bro, he's like a mad scientist, right? And he puts on the tape and he's like, I know exactly how to put you in the right position. And for how to have you like flourish in the system. Right. And I think that's why I think Mike McDaniel is the most important part of this. And you saw him when he got on the plane. As he, the first thing he wanted to do was talk to Tua. He FaceTimed Tua. And he's like, I see something in you and we're going to unlock that. And it, he did. He does everything he says he's yeah. going to do, right? That's that's a very so, good point. And actually, here's a clip of OBJ talking about how Mike McDaniel convinced him to be with the Miami Dolphins. Coach Mike kind of sold me as far as when we were speaking football, when we were speaking life and he was speaking my career. Um, it seemed like, you know, this is absolutely the right place to be. I know no two offenses in the NFL are the same, but you had a lot of success in a similar offense from Sean McVay with the Rams in 2021. Uh, at least there's some conceptual crossover there between him and Mike McDaniel, right? How excited are you to play for Mike McDaniel in this Dolphins offense? Very. Again, like I say, I think it was a major part of the decision. Um, sitting in the meetings and hearing some of the verbiage and the plays and all that, it, you could definitely uh, – L.A. was my favorite place that I had been because of everything that I had been through. And it uh, reminded me how much I loved football. And that's kind of what this is here. This is, you know, strictly football. Obviously, there's fun and all that, but the idea of what that offense is and just being able to hear that and see the concepts and do all that – um, it's what got me most intrigued about coming here. When you think about an 11 personnel package that has Tyreek, Waddle, and yourself, and you guys can all kind of play different positions, move across the formation, I'm curious, how do you think that you guys, having three game breakers who can line up anywhere, how does that challenge a defense in your mind? Uh, I think it's just dangerous. You know, it's like you got those two guys who everybody's going to worry about, and then, you know, uh, maybe one day everybody forgets about me. And <laughs> I would absolutely love that. I'm catching passes wide open, and turning up and going crazy and then you know you do that and it's like all right we got to focus on that a little bit and I mean you can't forget about I mean no you won't but you definitely can't forget about 10 and 17 they're, they're you know liable to score anytime they touch the ball and not even to mention the the whole running back crew right you know what I mean like it's just um I've really seen a actual opportunity when I came here to be around a bunch of playmakers ball gets spread around it's just uh it seems like it'll be something very hard to stop and I think uh, one thing about Coach, I always, you know, the old quote, they say offense wins games, defense wins championships. I think Coach takes it semi-personal to 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 change that statement and, and be like, you're going to have to outscore us and our defense is going to get stops, but you're going to have to outscore us. And, um, you know, it, it's always fun as an offensive player to be in a high-powered offense. Yeah, 30 points per game last year, hoping to get even more this year with you in, in the fold there. And speaking of that, the – But, yeah, I'm really excited to see what OBJ can bring to the offense – and Mike McDaniel, you're totally onto something there. Mike McDaniel really does unlock a different level for these players. Not to mention, we haven't talked about what he's done for Tua's career. So, yeah, Mike McDaniel does have a way of bringing out the best of players, at least on offense. We've been able to see that yeah. going back to his days in San Francisco. So it's, it's, a, it's a common trend right now, especially this offseason, right, of, the, of these players signing – with us for you a lot cheaper than mm -hmm. they normally would. Like even John U. Smith, he signed a four year, $50 million deal with the Patriots be before they ended up cutting him. Now, obviously they didn't use him to the best of his abilities, but I'm sure he came in. Mike McDaniel's like, Hey, look, I'm going to show you the way again. This is what we can do with you. Blah, blah, blah. Signed a two year, four and a half million dollar contract. Right. I think it's two year, 9 million, but it averages out to four and a half each year. So 
it's it's cool, man. If if we can continue that way, we're we're just always gonna end up getting these players that we're like, damn, we we ended up getting that guy for that yeah. much. Like it's it's awesome as a Dolphins fan to see that. Mm -hmm. Well, now that we have like so many players on offense, and we were talking about this earlier in the episode, when it comes to not having any fantasy options for Miami Dolphins. Oh yeah. It seems like the Dolphins are loaded when it comes to fantasy football and the options. So I believe one of our viewers yesterday uh, was asking about this, but who do you think are the must-have options for fantasy football when it comes to the Miami Dolphins? I I would say right now there's four. Okay. Possibly five. Okay. And that's obviously Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, Devon A. Chan, Raheem Mostert. So uh, those are the four. Those are the four. And then the fifth that I'm <laughs> that I I want to see what he can do, but I, I just have a really good feeling, and that's John Smith. Hmm. You know, maybe he has a second tight end for you. Wait, um, and Tua? You don't think he's a good option oh, for fantasy Sorry, football? I didn't think about Tua. Yeah, I, I think Tua's a good option. I just think, you know, last year, obviously, the touchdowns weren't there. If he can get that up, then for sure. And I think that's going to go up this year. So I would, I would put him up there, too. You right. know, obviously, it's not like you'd want to end up getting someone like Lamar Jackson Jalen Hurts, yeah, uh, maybe C.J. Stroud, but um, but yeah, I put two up there. I I, I might end up drafting him just because I'm a homer, but whatever. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, must haves would be obviously Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle. Mm -hmm. I think Raheem Mostert is gonna take a step back this season in the touchdowns. That's the only thing that I'm a little shaky with that because I do think he's gonna take a step back, but. Considering the production he had getting those touchdowns last year, that's why I put him in there. I'm going to say Devon Achan. Obviously, I really like... I'm curious to see what John U. Smith can bring. Mm -hmm. And then there's some sleepers in, obviously, OBJ now and Jalen Wright. So Jalen yeah. Wright might be a sneaky pick that uh, maybe is, he's a guy that you stash yeah. if, you, if you have the space on your roster. And it's funny because you mentioned it on, on another show, but you were saying how... You're basically predicting that Jalen uh, Jalen Waddle might have more years than Tyree Kill, so he might even be a better option than Tyree Kill this year. And you know, maybe they switch it up, maybe they spread the ball around a little bit more, so maybe our guys aren't super strong fantasy options because we're spreading it more. But you know, Tyree Kill is just always a safe bet, right? Look, I love fantasy football and everything, but at the end of the day, that's not our. That's not my thing, but, you know. I just want the Dolphins to win. So, as long as they're spreading the ball and we're winning games, that's that's what I'm Yeah. That's what I'm here for. Nah, and the players hate fantasy, right? People people bitching at them saying yeah. like, "Hey, you didn't get me that touchdown or yeah. you, you only got me 10 points or whatever though." But now that training camp's starting up at the end of this month, uh is there anyone that you think is going to pop out there on the field like that's going to really surprise people and maybe potentially maybe a guy on the bubble that might make it onto this team? Hmm, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know who's going to pop, but players that I'm hoping make a really big impact in training camp. I'm hoping that Aaron Brewer really shows out. Oh yeah. Another guy that I'm excited to see and would be Jody Fortson. I yeah. think that's going to be interesting. And then let's bring it over to defense. Someone that I'm also really excited to see would be the uh, linebacker that we got, Jordan Brooks. Jordan Brooks, yeah. Yeah, and then, so I, I, I went with someone I'm expecting, so it would be, I'm expecting for Jody Fortson to do some flashy plays. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping Aaron Brewer really shows out. I'm expecting linebacker Jordan Brooks, but let me, let me give another hopeful one for defense. I'm hoping that Cam Smith really shows out yeah in training yeah. camp well that's the guy you know we don't want that second round pick to be wasted so we want to see some production from him right yeah and if he pops out that means maybe he gets some playing time maybe he fights uh you know cater kohu for that third spot even though i know he's not really a slot corner but you never know hey talent's talent talent is talent and you want you want your best guys on the field right right and if you can do it then might as well throw him out there that would be that would be awesome I think uh, I think I'm gonna agree with you on offense, Jody Fortson, man. I think he was flashing all over the. You're hopeful. I'm right? hopeful, but I think he's or, a, yeah. no, no. I think he's gonna flash though. Okay. I think him and Malik Washington actually are gonna be the two that are gonna be like, holy crap! Like these guys got something, right? Yeah. So I think it's gonna it's gonna put us a little bit in a pickle, 
but it's gonna be a good pickle, right? Because it's, it's gonna the be pickle like, you want. Yeah, you got Odell Beckham out there. Like obviously you gotta play him, but damn, we really got this rookie that looks impressive. So, you know, it's it's a good problem to have. A problem that we had last year was that we had such little depth at wide receiver. I think we have a badass room have, right yeah, now, right? So much. Um so yeah, Jody Fortson, I think we already saw it already in OTAs. You know, he had all these highlights, but Malik Washington was there too. He had a bunch of stuff going on. Uh, Taj Washington, too, had that, that bomb from Tua. That was pretty cool. Not saying I expect much from him, but that's the one that I'm most excited to see, just again, him and uh, Barrios, right? Because mm -hmm. I feel like they're going to be fighting for that spot. I, I just feel like it's going to come down to them, too. And I feel like youth, at the end of the day, is going to win. The fact that we have him on the rookie contract, too, and Barrios is going to get the boot. I know that wasn't really a question, but I'm just saying that might happen. And then on defense, I like I like Anthony Walker jr mm -hmm. i think for oh, that yeah yeah for that contract that we got him i believe it was like one year 1.4 million crazy just a really talented guy that you know has been obviously screwed up due to injuries mm -hmm. yeah he's screwed over but i think if uh if he can stay out there healthy on the field he already he got a pick in otas too i thought that was cool um i think he's gonna flash all over the field especially next to jordan brooks i think that's gonna be a really cool tandem and David Long, finally, I think this is the best linebacker room we've had in a long period. I guess amount what? Of time. Uh, yeah, I, I can't really remember his name, but <laughs> but that room also we had Kiko Alonso, but you know that that was really didn't do much for me. Either yeah, there. I think this room has the potential to be a lot, be a lot better. Yeah, as long as they can stay away from injury, they have the potential there. Which is sure. that's their their biggest thing, right? Yeah. You know, well, especially Anthony Walker Jr., but. You know, Jordan, Jordan Brooks had that ACL injury. Um, but, but yeah, I'm excited to see them as well. And then I think that's basically it. I, and also, I'm really excited to see Jalen Ramsey. I'm, I'm excited to see what he can do. How about OBJ? OBJ, obviously. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. OBJ is going to be fun. Obviously, we got to get out there and, you know, hopefully we can we can tell you guys exactly how that is. The, the ones that can't make it out. Yeah, we're going to we're going to go out to training camps. So. Yeah, for sure. But um, but yeah, OBJ is gonna be cool to see him in a Dolphins jersey, man, down there, bro. That's gonna be sick. And and Ramsey, like I said, just a whole year and and in the system. Uh, let's see what he can do. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, I think that's gonna wrap it up for today. Thank you guys for taking your time to taking time out of your day to spend some time with us. We really appreciate it, and um, we'll see you guys in the next one. Fins up. Peace.